Hello there, we're all back. Welcome back. <laughs> this feel, feels so good to be here again on this Friday. Now, I hope you all had a fantastic end of your December slash break during the time I, I didn't really see you as much. In fact, if you did anything interesting or if you had any drinks, I would love to know in the comments down below because I think the strangest thing that happened during my winter break was that I drank a lot more tea than I was expecting to. Usually I am very, I mean, it's, it's in the name. <laughs> I'm more of a coffee person. I got this advent calendar for tea this year and it was just, it blew my mind. So Morgan drinks tea, possibly coming in the future. <laughs> Anyways, we're back here today and I have kind of a fun project for us. This is this is a little different. This is more of like kind of an, an arts and crafts sort of scenario. Uh, and to explain it, either you read the video title, let me just go grab it because it is an absolute behemoth that we're gonna be working on today. Okay, <laughs> we've inherited this absolute just monster of an espresso machine. This is a thrift store espresso machine. One of my friends found this and they knew I'd been on the lookout for something to refurbish for, for a long time. They sent me a picture of it and I said, buy it. <laughs> I was like, I will send you money. I will be there in five minutes to pick it up. Just put that thing on hold for me. So now we're left with this, which some of you might recognize it. This is a this is a KitchenAid espresso machine and it's, it's kind of old. This is a KPS 100. And as far as I can tell, this model is from a about 2003. So this is almost 20 years old if this is what I think it is. Also, I'll make a little bit of side note. We have we have a fun little second angle and kind of a guest appearance. Graham, who is our expert like blind taste test cup mixer is over there with the camera. So that's fun. Everyone wave to Graham. So let's get into this. I would like to take a look at this and I'd also like to see if we can get this into working condition within the confines of today. Now this is a second hand machine. In fact, I don't know how many hands have touched this before mine, but it's it's been used before. It's purchased from a thrift store and, and that's kind of fun. Like, I don't know if many of you know this, but the first espresso machine I ever had was actually second hand. I took the time to refurbish it, to clean it, and then it lasted me for quite a while. And it's a, it's a really fun project to undertake. And in fact, if you are interested in an espresso machine at perhaps a lesser price point, or if you like, if you like tinkering with things, I'd recommend this as like a very fun project that you could do. But let's do this together. Let's talk about some things that you should probably do if you buy a machine secondhand. And let's just, this is a challenge. We're doing this together. Let's get started. There's also a lot of tape. <laughs> so scissors. I, I commend the thrift store employee who was tasked with making sure none of the bits on this machine came off because the amount of tape they've put on here, they have, they have succeeded in ways that I didn't think possible. Okay, maybe that tape, this tape, it's on the back. Maybe it just stays on for a little bit. Oh, freedom. I would not be surprised if there was just an entire colony of spiders living in here. I should also mention, we have these kind of interesting uh, stickers <laughs> that someone has added at some point. Now, there is some debate for what these are. I thought they were something else. Someone said they look like eyeballs. So let's go with that. If you think they look like something else, they could be. I have no idea. We're gonna take them off as of right now. <laughs> okay. Now that we have everything out, let's look at all the bits and bobs that were included. We have our first and foremost, this is the most important thing you wanna make sure is always included with an espresso machine. If you pick it up from like a secondhand store or a thrift shop, you wanna make sure you have a porta filter included. These, especially with older machines, can be kind of hard to like refine. Let's say you're trying to find something that matches an older machine. You wanna make sure it's the right basket size. You wanna make sure it's the right fit. There's a lot of components that you're gonna to wanna to be looking for. It's just easier if the original is included. We also have what I'm assuming is a tamp. It does fit into our porta filter, which is also a good sign. You will want to make sure you have a tamp that fits the basket size of your porta filter. We've talked about plastic tamps before. They're not my favorite favorite, but I think because this is secondhand, we're gonna be grateful that we even got a tamp in the first place. And then this thing, we need to clean this. That is gonna be the first step of any sort of espresso machine refurbishment project that you take on. Now to clean this, I've got three main tools that we're gonna be using a lot here. The first thing is my, this is my holy grail. This is my like every single coffee person ever. If you have any sort of coffee equipment, you should have this, it's amazing. This is called Puro. It's espresso machine cleaning powder. It's in these little like white crystals this is non-sponsored by the way. I just <laughs> I love this stuff. And we're gonna be using it to clean a ton of the components that we have in here. You will also want some sort of bowl or receptacle. We're gonna be putting hot water plus our cleaning stuff. We're gonna be soaking things. You'll just, you'll want something that's like of decent size. Also, we have a little scrubby brush because I am anticipating that much of this will be pretty icky. So scrubby brush. If there is a technical name for this, please let me know in the comments. Until then, I will be calling it scrubby brush. We've also got a power cord. We're not gonna be plugging this in for a while because we've got a lot to do before then. So just set this off to the side. 
Yep, so looking at this machine, even though it looks pretty interesting, like this is this is a pretty uniquely shaped espresso machine. I, I would describe it as being bulbous. <laughs> it's not my favorite word, but I think it really works here for this design. It's pretty standard though. There is a dual boiler machine, which means you have a boiler that is working for the steam side of your machine. You also have a boiler that is working for your espresso side, which ideally in theory, if everything is working correctly, means that you'll be able to pull espresso shots and simultaneously steam milk at the same time. On the front, uh, it's it's pretty, <laughs> this is pretty monolithic. It's very simple. You have a button that turns the machine on and off. You have a button that starts your espresso and stops it. And then you've got a button for hot water dispensing and you've got like a steam wand control. And then that is, that is it. You've got uh, two dials here that's tracking the pressure of the two boilers. And like that is, it is, it is a simple like beast of a machine. And this thing weighs a ton. <laughs> oh my gosh, I forgot tape. There's more tape on this thing. 90% of this video is just gonna make me removing tape. We've got a nice bowl of, of soapiness, thanks to our Puro. And now it's time to dig into what is inevitably gonna be the nastiest part of this video. Moment of truth. Oh, we got a real cut out for us today. This is a not good color in case that wasn't clear. The first thing we're gonna start off with doing is just letting this have like a, a nice friendly soak inside our, our little bath cleaner. So you can stay right there while we get this unscrewed. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is, is clean up our group head. Right here, this is called the group head. Underneath here, we have this screen. We also have a screw here. This helps with water dispersion. So you have like all your tubing up here. Your water is coming down through the group head and then it's being dispersed by this screen here so that it is falling evenly over your bed of coffee. We need to pull this out. We need to clean everything that's up here. And to do that, I have a screwdriver. Basically just eating my lav mic at this point. It is grimy up here, everyone. Okay. This is your little dispersion screw. You need this. Do not lose this ever. <laughs> Usually the screen is supposed to kind of just like fall down when the, when the screw has come out. It's not doing that, <laughs> which is not a good sign. Ooh. <laughs> This this machine has not been well loved in a while. It makes me very sad, but that's why we're here today. So that's ground coffee. We don't know how many years old <laughs> this coffee is, but it sure is in there. Underneath here, there is, oh gosh, there is so much. Holy cow, that's amazing actually. This entire group head is just caked in ground coffee. And whenever you buy a secondhand machine, you need to get rid of this. This is, this is nasty stuff up here. So first things first, take this over to the sink. We're gonna wanna scrub this all out. It's really just, it is caked on here. Usually coffee would just kind of like fall off when, you know, underwater. This is like a paste, it's kind of gruesome. Okay, well, it's nowhere near perfect, but it is significantly better. So you can see we got most of that initial grime off. Now there is still, and you can see it when you see some of the light falling through, there is still a lot of plugged holes in here with like coffee grime that just won't come out. We're gonna also stick this right in there. Let that just soak in a stew of nastiness. Already you can see there's a ton of like <laughs> water discoloration with how much coffee and just grime and whatever is up here being stuck there. So the next thing we have to do is tackle, tackle this, which is a terrifying, <laughs> terrifying image. Similarly to what we did before, I'm gonna go get some more hot water. We're gonna get the rest of our Puro and we're just gonna start working up here. <laughs> Just watch, watch the color of this change. This is a whole different level of Morgan Spills coffee today. Oh, we're seeing silver. This right here <laughs> is what we wanna see. This is good. You know, I think some of these grounds have been on here <laughs> since 2003. <laughs> I'm really pursuing my, uh, my lifelong dream of being a dental hygienist right now. <laughs> I've never been this intimate with an espresso machine before. <laughs> I think for the time being, this is as clean. There's more tape. There's more tape on this. I missed more tape. Okay. Anyways, I think for the time being, this is as good as this is gonna get. Uh, we are gonna back flush and run some cycles on this. Fingers crossed that it works. And then we'll look back at it afterwards. I think just getting some stuff moving in it is gonna help this process a lot. That being said, I am pretty proud of what I did. <laughs> okay, so now that we've let all of our friends over here have a nice long soak, let's see what progress we've made on these. Okay, so first off our porta filter, which is super nasty inside. Oh, good, 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 good. That's looking significantly better. There's a little bit of, of scrubbing that needs to be done. I'm gonna let this continue to soak in a fresh batch of Puro once we've cleaned all of these. All in all, this is a significant improvement over what we had before. Next. 
Next up, our portafilter basket uh, looks pretty great. I don't see any like tarnishing or any like residue left on it. It also looks like all of the, the little holes in the basket are completely clear, so there won't be any blockages. Okay, so I can still see on this screen that there are some blockages. There are still some points on here where light's not able to pass through, where that like that deep, deep sediment like grime is stuck in here. So I'm gonna try to poke them out uh, with my little tool. But other than that, this looks pretty great. Uh, color wise, there's no tarnishing. Um, there's no built up residue. That's all come out. It's just making sure that all these little holes um, in the screen are clear. Well, since we have made significant progress, let's stick these back in for one last soap. Let's look at the rest of the machine. All right, now that I think we've got the crustiest, <laughs> the crustiest bits clean, let's kind of look at the, the larger picture here because this was the most time consuming activity, but we've still got like a drip tray. We've got lots of dusting, just general dusting to do. So drip tray next, this needs to be scrubbed out and there is, <laughs> This is so nasty, y'all. <laughs> Anyways, back to the sink. The good news is a little bit of soapy water, we'll fix this right up. And tape, always more tape. Now for the second layer. Guess where we're going? I swear, if this thing actually doesn't work for some like internal reason that I can't actually fix on my own, I will be so sad. A lot of hair in this. Like there's an alarming amount of like long hairs coming out of this. Don't even want to know. The back is pretty simple. We have our port for our eventual power plug. We've got tape residue <laughs> absolutely everywhere. And we also have this water tank. So we have these two tubes here. These are gonna pull water out of this water tank and draw them into the two boilers. This one is for the steam side and then this one is for the espresso side. Now it, it bodes well that I'm not able to see any visible mold growing on here. That will sometimes happen if there is a contaminant in your water or if your water has sat for too long and any bacteria or like anything like that has gotten into it. The fact that there is no like visible mold is kind of good. We'll still need to run cleaning cycles through this, of course, but I think we're on the right track. Okay. All right, well, I think it's time we reinsert everything and turn this bad boy on. <laughs> it's gonna be the moment of truth of whether this is actually gonna work. Oh gosh, this is fine. It's fine. The screen is back in. Drip tray goes back in. Let's just see if this thing works. Good news is our portafilter does fit. Remember that power plug that we got earlier? We need it. In you go. It's been plugged in. We're just gonna press the on button, see what happens. We got the instruction manual. <laughs> Supposedly, this light is supposed to be on. So. <gasps> there we go, the light is on. I'll be honest, my heart stopped right there. <laughs> it's not plugged in far enough. Yeah, it, uh, didn't plug it in. Never before have I felt sheer panic. All this work and then the espresso machine doesn't even turn on. I'm very excited about this. That was that was just a complete rush of emotions that I was not expecting. So in theory now, both of these boilers are now heating up. They will be ready shortly and then we can test, test whether it works. I'm so glad it turned on. That would have been truly humiliating. Good things are happening, everyone. Good things. It's making sounds too, so that's kind of fun. While we're waiting for this to preheat, I will note that there is one noticeably missing part from this machine and that is with the steam wand over here. This is our little steam wand right here. It's attached on a nice little ball joint, which I love. Not enough espresso machines put their steam wands on ball joints and it's very nice. That being said, it is missing its plastic guard. Right down here is where you're actually gonna have your steam leaving, this little like spout slash hole at the bottom. However, generally, if you were buying this at like usual retail, like firsthand, you would have this, uh, if you can see here, this little plastic guard that's gonna disperse the steam a little bit better. And it's also gonna protect a bit from the heat that's gonna be running through this hot metal, which is gonna make it a little bit more dangerous to touch. That being said, it doesn't impede the testing of whether this works or not. We will be able to tell if this this thing lets steam out and all that stuff. It's just gonna be like a little bit more inconvenient to use and all that jazz. Ho oh, ho, let's go ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> How exciting. <laughs> That's powerful too. That is, a, that is a strong steam wand. I'm just putting a cup underneath this to catch all of our icky like espresso water that's probably gonna come out of this because otherwise it's just gonna flow into our drip tray, which is fine. That's what a drip tray is for, but I would rather not clean it again this soon. <laughs> that's about what I expected to find um, <laughs> hidden up within the group head. You wanna drink it? I will give you so much to drink this. <laughs> I can't drink that, that's pure okay. <laughs> I mean, you can have a little pure calf as like a treat <laughs> and it's not gonna kill you. Uh, don't, don't do that as a disclaimer. Please do not consume pure calf, but like I'm pretty sure it's like food safe. 
It doesn't not say that you can consume it. What it says is it causes skin irritation <laughs> and says wash early after handling. <laughs> and then if in eyes, rinse cautiously with water for several minutes. It says nothing about not eating it. So do with that information what you will. However, we're gonna throw this away. Let's run this a little bit longer just to make sure we've got all the ickies out. It is so aggressive, holy cow. Now that we have theory confirmed that everything kind of works in here, we're gonna do what's called back flushing. So I've got this porta filter. This is the same uh, porta filter that came with this, but I have, I've switched out the basket. This is a basket that has no mesh at the bottom, no screen, as you can tell from the difference here. This is just, just a basket, nothing goes in or out of it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add just a tiny bit of our Puro into this. Then we're gonna slot it back up into this. That way, when the water is dropped, instead of passing through it like espresso, so it would, it's gonna, again, force everything kind of back up, force all that cleaning liquid up into the machine and really get any grime that's like built up in this just like massive thing here <laughs> that I can't get into. It's gonna force that all out. So we're not gonna do this for very long. We're just gonna do this in kind of short cycles. And once more. We're just gonna continue running it for a little bit again until this water runs clear. I think we're now ready to brew some espresso, so we're gonna swap this back to our regular basket. This is my favorite part of swapping baskets. There you go. Okay, in, in the spirit of storing this, I think we should use the tools we were given. We're gonna use our scoop here, but we're also gonna go by weight. So I have this all teared out. I have some very finely ground espresso. Let's just get started. This basket is a tiny bit smaller than the ones I usually use at home. I'm gonna aim to have about 18 grams of coffee in my basket. As usual, we will evenly distribute. We've got our strange tamp. Let it be known that I hate plastic tamps. Good news is it looks like espresso. Okie dokie. <laughs> this is great. An hour and a half later and we've achieved something. Smells good, smells like espresso. Let me get a little spoon so we can stir this up, get some tasting going on. Good temperature, plenty hot enough that boiler is certainly doing its job. It's a little over extracted, which is just takes time to dial in on this, but tastes good. I've got very minimal complaints over the fact that I still need to dial in a little bit, but this, this works. <laughs> I think we've achieved the espresso side of the espresso machine, which is very exciting. I do, however, wanna take a peek at this side. And I do, I wanna, I don't know if I'm supposed to do this. I might get in trouble for this, but I do wanna try steaming on this, even though we don't have the guard. I think it will be okay. And if it's not, I will take full responsibility for it. Let's. Get it one more espresso shot and let's actually steam at the same time that we're pulling our espresso shot. Let's let's double check to make sure the, the entirety of this like machine's capacity works. I've got our espresso already. Uh, we're gonna pull it into this six and a half ounce double walled glass right here. And then simultaneously, we are going to attempt, attempt uh, to steam some milk. So in theory, we'll be able to make a nice little cappuccino at the end. It's a slow frother, but it is warming up. That will need some cleaning later. The texture isn't great, but that being said, even without our little attachment on the end, that steam one definitely did its job. And that is definitely a pretty decent drink. Will I be picking plastic tape residue off of this machine until the day I die? Probably, but does the machine at least work now? Yes, it does. And we have a nice clean machine to work with, which is what we were looking for. I hope this was a fun video <laughs> for you to at least watch the process of. And I hope this was a little bit of encouragement of even if you find like just absolutely beat up, like grody machines like this one was secondhand, most of the time they are rescuable. <laughs> most of the time they just need a little bit of elbow grease, a little bit of love and a little bit of knowledge of what what pieces to clean and what pieces to kind of just leave alone to get these back in working condition. This again is almost 20 years old. This again had basically like archaic amounts of coffee grounds just stuck to it. And yet at the end of the day, with a little bit of love, we're here and it's sticky and it's still a little bit covered in hair, but we're here and we are making lattes. So we are good to go. I hope this was kind of educational for some of you. I hope this was kind of fun for you. And I know I had a good time. So until next time, I'm Morgan Drinks Coffee on all the channels that I'm active on. I'm here pretty much once a week and you'll find me here many other times a week for shorts. You can find me on TikTok and Instagram again almost every single day. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. I'm gonna go finish my latte and I will see you next time. <laughs>